Good morning, I'm Zach Gearhart, Director of Government Relations here at Wichita State University. Welcome to the first WSU weekly briefing. Uh, this being kind of the first one, we just wanna walk through how these are gonna work in the future. The goal of these is to be a little bit more proactive about how we get information out, just not to campus, but also to our greater Wichita community. So we're going to lead with kind of a few smaller stories that you may have already heard about and just uh, lead with those that I'll do. And then every week we're gonna have kind of a broader topic that a subject matter expert, if you will, will be leading the way for. And then at the end, we're gonna bring it home with questions. Uh, so in the future, we're gonna try and do these as much as possible here, same time, same place. You'll be notified about any changes to that. Uh, myself and uh, Tracy Fries with Research and Technology Transfer will be doing the bulk of them. There might be some gaps in between like Tanya Witherspoon's going to be doing uh, next week. So let's go ahead and kind of get into the news of the day. So you probably heard last week the Board of Regents approved tuition fee increases for the various universities. WSU's was about 2.5% uh, for tuition, 0.9% for fees, so about 2.2% cumulatively. Uh, nobody likes to talk about tuition increases. Nobody likes to vote to pass them. Uh, it's important to realize that this is happening at a time when uh, we're about $100 million down from where we were in 2008 as a state for higher education investment from the state. The legislature did make some improvements this year. They put about uh, oh, $1.4 million to Wichita State's budget to our base budget to help, but still got a long ways to go. Uh, inflation for higher education is about 3%, so 2.5% tuition increase we thought covered our mandatory cost increases such as health insurance, tenured faculty lines and promotion, those types of things. Uh, Office of Institutional Equity and Compliance, we are pleased to announce that uh, we have a new uh, director for that, Christine Taylor, is going to be coming in from Marquette University. For the last year, we've been doing an in-depth study about how best to address Title IX, EEO, those types of things. And the best practices told us that we really needed somebody overarching for both of those to help us with federal compliance issues. So she'll be coming in, I believe, sometime in August to help with those efforts. She's gonna be putting together a plan of action as well as staffing needs, those sorts of things. So be looking more for that. I'm sure you all saw on social media about new dining options at the Radigan Student Center. Uh, we're very excited to uh, have uh, Freddy's Frozen Custard as well as Panda Express on our campus. Um, but aside from those two entities, it's important to realize that this was really an effort engaging our students, our faculty, our staff about what they wanted for dining options on campus, and these selections reflect that. So uh, more impressed by the fact that they're gonna be here as early as August for the fall semester. Um, <clears throat> website rollout, this is uh, definitely a shout out to our strategic communications division. They've been working on this pretty hard. Uh, we're gonna be talking about this more next week in depth, but that's gonna go live July 1. And WSU Tech, as you know, we've been doing uh, some work with that affiliation. That's gonna go uh, live and be official July 1 as well. We're gonna have a celebration on July 12th. For facilities, we just kind of want to walk through because it's the start of the semester coming up, just what are going to be the big changes, what dirt you're going to see moving, those types of things. So you're going to see, probably have seen, Flats Phase 2 has broken ground. Uh, I believe that's scheduled to be done by the fall of next year for students to move into. There's going to be a new crash lab breaking ground on campus to help with uh, some of our research and technology needs, as well as a new wellness center that's going to schedule to be breaking ground this semester and scheduled to be done January of 2020. So with that being said, now we want to kind of move into what our big topic of the day is, uh, which is the renaming of the College of Education to be the new uh, College of Applied Studies. So Dean Lefevre is here to talk about that. We have a video to show you, if I can get that to work. So I'll be right back. The college is made up of four departments, and within the, those four departments, about half of our student body is teacher education. The remaining three departments within the college 
deal with other professions. We wanted a name for our college that really reflected the diversity and programs that we had to offer. The benefits of changing the name of our college for students really will be that it will be easier for them to find degree programs like sport management or exercise science, programs that they wouldn't necessarily think to check in a college of education for. We have a very rich history of preparing teachers. In order to be able to continue to celebrate that success, we will rename our Department of Curriculum and Instruction to the School of Education. We're very excited about the change for the college. We see this as a new beginning in many ways, a way for us to really expand our offerings for our students and meet the needs of our community and our constituents in the, in the workforce. So I hope you uh, felt some excitement in the video. I am just so proud to introduce the College of Education under a new name, the College of Applied Studies. The Kansas Board of Regents approved the name changes at its meeting on Wednesday, June 20th. And the change really was made to better reflect the broad range of educational and applied learning offerings the college provides. Throughout its history, the college has grown and changed to meet the ch challenges of preparing professionals for an increasingly complex and specialized world. For example, the college has expanded to include not only the preparation of teachers and educational leaders, but also counselors, educational psychologists, school psychologists, athletic trainers, and professionals in sport management and exercise science. In fact, nearly half of our students are in majors other than teacher education. So in considering the new name, it was very important to us that we communicate all of the programs within the college and that all of them have built a reputation for success by engaging students in high quality, engaging applied learning experiences and really preparing them to meet workforce and industry needs. This new name of the college will enable us to communicate the breadth of programs and opportunities we offer students and industry partners as well as the emphasis we place on applied learning. In fact, we've proposed a new degree program, the Bachelor of Applied Science in Workforce Leadership and Applied Learning, that we anticipate will be approved this fall. Our intent is to move boldly into the space of preparing graduates for the workforce by placing them in applied learning settings from the beginning of their degree program all the way through the end. Our intent is to deeply immerse them in the workplace at the same time they're completing their degree. In addition, the college's Department of Curriculum and Instruction is now the School of Education. Renaming the Department of Curriculum and Instruction to the School of Education affords our teacher educators the opportunity to maintain a strong identity as teacher preparation within the newly renamed College of Applied Studies and allows us to showcase the variety of educator preparation programs housed within that department. It also enables us to be more easily identified for those searching online for a teacher preparation program. Both of these new names are consistent with the college's mission to prepare education and other professionals to benefit society and its institutions through the understanding the facilitation and the illumination of, learning, of the learning process and the application of knowledge in their disciplines. Equally important, the new college name emphasizes the depth of all of our students' preparation via applied learning experiences. We want to recognize the thousands of individuals with deep connections and proud affiliations to the College of Education at Wichita State University. It is our desire to strengthen that sense of pride in our college. This change is representative, representative of the academic innovation occurring within the college. We are a college on the move. Our goal is to continue to reach out to identify new programs and opportunities to meet the needs of our constituents and to better serve our students. We believe this broader and more inclusive name can open new avenues for external partnerships that will benefit a range of constituents and make a positive impact on the Kansas economy. We hope our alumni, our faculty, staff, and students who are not in teacher education-centric majors view this new name as further validating 
their importance within the college, while at the same time those in teacher education continue to feel highly valued as part of our School of Education. Since 1895, when the college was known as the normal department within Fairmount, Fairmount College, the WSU College of Education has had a rich and very successful history of preparing teachers and educational leaders through high quality award winning programs. That will not change. What will change is the ability to promote and better celebrate the success of all of our programs within the college. I hope you will join me in celebrating this new chapter in our college. Thank you, Dean. Uh, thank you, Dean Lefevre. So the best thing about being the university spokesperson for the morning is that the second you sit down, you get told everything that you did wrong. Um, good news is there's only one thing, so or at least that they're telling me. Uh, so the website rollout is actually July 9th, not July 1, so my bad. Um, one quick thing before we just jump into questions, I meant to do this at the front end, but uh, we are live streaming this so you can review it later for your convenience as well as for people outside the university and campus. Uh, and if there's a question that I don't know the answer to, uh, Joe gets to uh, answer the question and he'll be getting back to you. Uh, so let's go ahead, just jump into questions for myself or Dean Lefevre. Any figures? Absolutely. Uh, could I get your name really quick? I'm Suzanne Tobias. Oh, very good. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, so kind of going back to flats phase one, uh, last year we were triple bunking a number of students and the, you know, nobody likes to triple bunk students. It's just not fun, whether you're the administration that has to deal with it or the parents that have to move the kids into it or the kids themselves, it's never ideal. So for a while now, we've been trying to figure out how do we address that need? And we had always intended to add on to the flats as we go along and as our on-campus housing population demands increase. Uh, in a couple of weeks, we're hoping to have a more in-depth, uh, kind of one of these larger topics talking exactly about housing, what the plans are, uh, what those people who are gonna be triple bunked have to deal with. So we'll have some more information for you uh, there, so. Uh, we project that we're going to be in a situation where we're double bunking and triple bunking students for this year. Yeah. Sure. Joe has volunteered me to speak a little bit to this. Um, so we are sitting at a high capacity. Um, we've been projecting since last year that we'd be pretty full again this year. So we've made some strategic um, changes to how we were filling our rooms. A lot of our singles became doubles. A lot of our larger double spaces, we strategically picked those out to make these triples into. And so students are aware on the front end when they're going into our selection software that they're choosing a triple this year. This isn't a after the fact, we are too full, you get another person in your room. So folks are picking this option. It actually provides another cost-effective option for students. Um, so we actually still have doubles available and there are students picking these triple rooms for that reason of just having um, a lower cost option. So overall, um, we have capacity for 1,400 for this year. Um, we are sitting at about 1,300 applications on file. So it's going to be another full year. We're excited about that. And because of that, we have plans for um, phase two of the flat that's um, being called the suites at this point in time that is going to be opening for next fall so that we can either de-densify some of the rooms we already have or um, if we're full, add 230 more beds. Absolutely. So when we speak about um, the tripling, it's between Shocker and the flats. So um, the rooms originally at the flats were all set up as singles, so a lot of those have become doubles. But if you've taken a look or if you have any interest, you can check out our tour room and see exactly how spacious those rooms are and see that that really isn't, hasn't been an issue to double those rooms. And some of the traditional spaces over at Shocker are what are often being tripled. 
We have some of those spaces that you'd consider those big large corner rooms. Um, if you've gone in, you just see there's a lot of different sizes within Shocker Hall. And so again, we were really strategic about which ones are taking on an extra roommate to make sure that it's still a comfortable living space for all the students. Katie Austin, I'm the uh, Marketing and Outreach Coordinator for Housing. Thanks. All right. Any other questions? Sure. Uh, I'll let Dean Lefevre talk about that since she was instrumental in those efforts. It is a trend in that colleges of education are really broadening their programming. Um, a lot of colleges of education are tacking on names to their college name. Um, some are completely starting from scratch like we did. So you're absolutely correct. It is, it is a, a kind of a trend across the nation. All right, anything else? Okay, well, again, we'll be doing this next week. Look forward to seeing some of you there. We'll be announcing this in WSC Today and Shocker Blast uh, location time, all of that. So thank you. <laughs>